I wanted to show all of you how I keep a axolotl baby whenever I first get it. These are two about four and five inch copper babies and I admit it is about time to put them in a tank. Um, I have them in this little setup right here and honestly I, I'm going to separate them soon. I had them separated before but I'm going to separate them again. But they've been doing pretty well in here. Daily water changes of all the water. So you could just scoop them up in a net or try to pour the water out while they're still in there but usually they'll just fall out into the bucket that I'm pouring it into so you know but um, I finally transitioned them to pellets and they are eating them off of the ground so they are ready to be in a tank now I just don't have one ready for them now if you were to get a baby that's not three to four or five inches but it's instead two to three inches or three to four inches it's gonna be small like this one is about two and a half inches this one is three inches um, and I admit these cups right here are really small for them. I do 100% water changes on these too. I just have them in these temporarily because they are being kept separate from their siblings. This is how their siblings are being kept and these are all like two to three inches. Some of them are runs and I just keep them in here. The catapa leaves are to separate them from each other. So they don't nip as much and there's more barriers and places to hide. Because it's hard to put hides in something like this. And each of these containers is about 5 gallons of water. And I do about 90% water changes of it a day. This is how I would keep them if I had just gotten these in the mail. And there's a few reasons for that. First of all, they're really small. They're about 2 to 3 inches. So the height of the water is fairly you know two to three inches high in this thing so for them to go up and get air it's not hard and for them to find food it's right in front of their face all the time so they can easily find it and eat it um, another problem is like with them being two inches they're really small and the filter input could in fact pull them up to it and that would stress them out and any tiny amount of water flow they're more susceptible to at this age because they're not heavy they don't really have a grip or anything, so they'll probably go flying around the tank if there's even a little bit of water flow, which there shouldn't be, but even more so with these little guys. Another reason is that I would want to quarantine them if they weren't bred by me, they were in somebody else's house. I want to make sure that they are quarantined for a month so that they don't infect my axolotls should they carry some sort of disease or parasite. Most owners, when they are getting their first axolotl, they will set up a tank like this that's just 10 gallons until they can afford a bigger one. But what I would do instead is if you're getting a baby, just put it in a small Tupperware container, do water changes daily, and just save up until you can get the bigger tank because the 10 gallon isn't going to last that long and you're wasting money on it if you're going to upgrade in like two or three months because they grow about an inch a month, sometimes more, sometimes less. And um, a good filter if you are going to keep the babies in a tank is a sponge filter like I have right here. This is actually the black room tank. I'm a little bit sparse. So, anyways, another thing with the tank, with the 10 gallon tank, is if you have a little, little baby that's three inches long right here, it has to j swim all the way from there to there just to get a gulp of air. And they do have rudimentary rudimentary lungs at this point in their life cycle and they will continue to have lungs so they'll want to go up for air every once in a while. So if you put in some food, the food's going to go straight into the filter like uh, brine shrimp or um, black worms, anything, anything that you put in that's small enough for a three inch baby is going to fly into that filter right there. So that's not good. You're going to have to clean out that filter daily. It's going to be terrible. And on top of that, the likelihood that the baby's going to find that food on the bottom of the tank is so slim. Whenever your axolotl decides to start eating pellets off of the ground or night crawlers or cut up worms off of the floor and not have to be hand fed is when I recommend that you put them into a tank. Only because, as I said, small foods sucked into the filter create waste 
and it's a nightmare. And they're not really hunting the food, they're just waiting for it to pass by their face. While you have that tank set up, um, a at least a month before you plan to put them into it, you can start to cycle it. I have a video on cycling, although it is a little bit repetitive and it drags on. So I plan to make a remake that's just more simple in terms of everything, just the basics because I try to cover everything and then it turns into run-on sentences and just like this video. So I apologize in advance.